Welcome back to Truth at the Table. This is our first official truth podcast, and I'm really excited that each of you are here. Today, we are going to dive into our first topic, which is identity. This is going to be a series, and it is called She Is, because the truth about who she is, as in you are, is the hardest thing to believe. 2020 can be different, though, if we believe in who we are and who God says we are. As we study identity here at the start of 2020, we wanted you to have a guidebook to the scriptures that describe who you are. Right now, on our website, there's an absolutely free PDF you can download. It is 30 descriptions of you that begin with, She is and go on to describe you from God's perspective through His Scripture. As we study identity as a community, this resource will be the guidebook. Making it has changed my life. So I hope you'll go to our website and download it, print it, tape each page to your bedroom walls, or just spend some of your spare time today scrolling through truth rather than funny memes. (laughs) Before I get started, I also want to say some thank yous. I want to thank my friend, Emily Brown, for making this beautiful resource possible. She and her mama have read it and helped edit and refine it. They believe in who you are, and I am so grateful for their help in bringing you something to help you see who you are too. So, identity. It's complicated. In order to start taking a hard look at ourselves and who we are, we need to understand what components make up our identity. And I believe that I have found a philosopher and thinker who has said it best. Shrek said, (laughs) we are all like onions. We all have our layers. Today, we're going to explore the truth about the layers of our identity. The innermost layer of our identity is our spirit. It's the part of us that will live on forever. The portion of our hearts that we cr- that were created for the spirit of the Lord. This part of our heart can be occupied by many things that are not of God. As things that are not of God and his spirit fill this part of our heart, the rest of, I- of our identity will show signs of its presence. Our whole body. Bodies will fill the storm deep within the spirit portion of our identity. This is the part of our heart we give Jesus. This is the part of our heart he tells us we have to work hard to protect. The next layer is our personality layer. This layer contains our likes, our dislikes, our thoughts, our perspectives, and our secrets. For some people, this layer of themselves is an open book. For others, it's much harder to read. This layer of who you are is determined by what is inside the innermost layer we just talked about. This layer has a direct effect on the next layer as well. The final layer is your body or action layer. This layer is proof of what is going on within you. This layer composes what you do, what you say, how you treat others, what you wear, what you post, and who you surround yourself with, and exactly how you act when you're hangry. This layer is what other people can see. Many times, people will use this layer to decide who you are without considering the other two. But you, my friend, you are an onion with three layers. You are so much more than just this outer layer. So how do we see our identity the way that God does? And how do we begin to live out the identity that God calls us to? Well, it starts with the first layer we discussed, that spirit layer. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The innermost layer of our identity is, is a place for the Lord's Spirit. It was created with Him, with Him in mind, 
to occupy, to stay, to be the core of our being. When He is at the core of our being, of our identity, we will gain freedom from all of the rest of the layers of our identity. Our personality will align with Him. Our desires will align with Him. Our actions, what we post, who we surround ourselves with, will align with Him. And we will walk in His identity. You see, it's not up to us to go into 2020 with a million goals and ideas of how we're going to shape and change who we are. It's really up to us to allow God to move into our core being, to take His place in the center of our lives, and let Him have the freedom. Let go and let Him begin to change our personalities and our desires. And watch as our actions, especially the way we act when we're frustrated or at the end of our rope, begin to change. Not because of our power or our control, but because of His. Because He's at our core. And He makes up the largest part of who we are. As we begin to let God move in our identity... We will begin to be the women that embody the scriptures that describe us as mighty, as capable, especially as enough, as free, and most importantly, His. Here at the start of 2020 and the start of this community at this table, let's pray. Lord, you are more than we can ask or imagine. When we ask you to fill the core of our identity, God, pour out your spirit into us. God, we ask you to be at the center of our identity and that we would see you move in our personality, changing our desires, changing what we want most. And God, I pray that that shows up in our actions in the things that people first noticed about us. God, I pray that they would notice you. We ask God for you to eradicate the storm within us. God, come and occupy the innermost part of our personality. Lord, we want to begin to live lives that mirror who you say we are. God, we want to believe and who you say we are. Amen. Well, at the end of every podcast, I'm always going to ask you a question, but I wanted to take a minute to explain where that question came from. I am a huge fan of the podcast, The Next Right Thing by Emily P. Freeman, and I'll be sure to link it in our show notes, which will I'll explain how to find those at the end of the episode as well. But she did this podcast and she mentioned just kind of like as a side note, this article that Oprah Winfrey wrote. And if you knew me, my 10 year old self, you knew that I, when I came home from school, I was obsessed with Oprah. Like I had to watch her every day. And after Oprah, Little House on the Prairie came on and my sister hated it. But it was a great time in life. Like, I literally saw all of these people just sit down with this random lady and talk, and I thought, it was genius. And then I found out, like, some of the crazy things about Oprah, and, like, my adoration kind of, like, went away. But she asked this question, and she, she was asked this question on her show, and she didn't know how to answer it. So it became... A question she asked herself every week, and she shared that with people. But really, as as followers of Christ living in this crazy world, it is so hard to hold on to truth, and it is so hard not to write narratives about ourselves, about our own identity, that aren't true. So that is why I'm going to leave you with this important question at the end of every podcast. 
Because I know if you look, if you search, you will find truth in your life. No matter where you are, no matter what situation you're in or what decision you have to make. So, before we go, I'm going to ask you an important question, as I will at the end of every podcast. What is true in your life today?